In this video, we'll introduce the Python programming language and Jupyter programming environment. So Python is a general purpose, high level computer programming language. So high level meaning that programs are interpreted rather than compiled and general purpose in the sense that it's used for pretty much everything in scientific computing. It's also used a lot in other fields, including uh, uh, web development, data science, uh, it's a very, very widely used and popular programming language. And also one of the one of the best programming languages to learn for your first language, often taught in intro computer science courses. Um, Anaconda is something that we're going to download in that is a Python distribution with many libraries that are helpful and convenient for scientific computing. Um, and for our purposes, one of these are going to be NumPy. So NumPy is a Python library for large arrays and matrices. You may have noticed that in quantum mechanics, we're very often dealing with matrices and things that are very large arrays. And in computational chemistry, we're going to deal with uh, enormously large matrices. So things like NumPy help to deal with that. Because in a sense, quantum chemistry is mostly a linear algebra and integrals problem. And there's Jupyter, which was previously called IPython Notebook, which is a web-based interactive computing environment for Python. So normally when I'm doing uh, Python scripting, what I'm doing that from is a terminal in a, in a machine with a Linux operating system. So I'm currently doing this on a Windows computer, and I know that Windows is the most popular operating system and one which people are most accustomed with. So I want you to have some kind of... Uh, coding environment that you can use on a Windows computer that's easy to download and easy to set up without having to be able to find some type of Linux system to log into. And also within Anaconda, there's matplotlib, which we'll get into uh, later on down the road, and that's a Python library for plotting graphs and functions. So if you have a lot of data, you can turn the, that data into useful graphs. Uh, you have the, the initial raw data, which the Python language can allow you to organize into convenient uh, tables and arrays, and then matplotlib can allow you to plot that and save those in nice uh, publication-style images. So these things we can download. Um, in order to use Jupyter, we're going to need to download Anaconda. We're going to download that from continuum.io, and Jupyter we're going to download from jupyter.org. So let's check out these websites. So continuum.io, you can see that's a pretty simple website here on the front page. Uh, it says here uh, the Anaconda package, download for free. Should work fairly straightforward uh, for Windows systems to download that. Then once you have that downloaded, you can download Jupyter, which as it says, open source interactive data science and scientific computing across 40 programming languages. Uh, we're just interested in the one at the moment. But as you can see, it can do much more than just Python if you should be interested in that sort of thing. So you have notes on installation over there. Okay, and then once you get those working uh, and, and installed, then you'll have some type of uh, environment like this um, this is a Google Chrome browser that I've been using for my other internet sites. Uh, notice that when I de actually launch the the individual Jupyter notebook uh, project, then that launches this GUI here just in the Chrome browser. So that's very convenient because we know kind of how the functionality of an internet browser works without having a lot of uh, programming experience. Okay, so. I'm going to create a new folder here. So I'm going to say new folder. Right now it's untitled folder. So I'm going to check that and rename. I'm just name it test just for now. Okay, so I'm going to click it to go into this test folder. And right now it's empty. So I'm going to have it make a new text file. And right now this is called untitled.txt, a text file. I'm going to call this hello world.py, .py being a Python file extension. Okay, and I'm going to say new notebook. I'm going to do a Python 2 notebook because Python 2.7 is going to be the version I'm running. 
Also make sure when you download Anaconda that and Jupyter, whatever versions you select, select the versions for Python 2 if you want to follow along at all on these things because that's what I'm going to be using. Okay, so typically when you're programming, the first thing you do in a language is a file called hello world where you just print the phrase hello world to the screen. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to say print uh, apostrophe hello world exclamation and close that. Then I'm going to save by hitting control S. Now it says it's saved a few seconds ago and it popped up file saved over here. So then this notebook, I can execute um, the commands that are inside of this Python script here, inside this hello world.py, which are both now inside this directory here, in this test directory. So my notebook as well is untitled at the moment, so I can name that um, test1, maybe. Okay, now it's test1 ipython notebook. All right, and I'm gonna just going to say... Uh, in this in this line here in this notebook, run dot slash hello world dot pi, and then I'm going to hit shift enter, and it executes hello world. So it's printing, and my file works, and whatever I save here now is going to be working. So this thing really works. Control S to save. If I go up here again, shift enter to run it, this thing really works. So that's the basics of setting up the Jupyter notebook for a computing environment. And I'm going to use this for uh, several programs that I'm going to be building and running throughout this playlist.